All right, y'all. This is your review for Bad Blood, October 5, 2024. I thought pretty much it was a two-match show for the most part, but to just fill our matches in between after the first match. Just didn't really care for them. I like the segment with Gunther and Goldberg. I thought that was hilarious. And Gunther taking uh doing the insults on Goldberg. Um Yeah, we got the Rock showing up. Smell what the Rock is cooking. The final boss is back. He basically boosted this up. I'd probably give this pay per view. Like before Rock showed up, I'd probably give it up about four out of ten, five out of ten. But as soon as he showed up, he boosted up maybe two points. Well, four to a six out of ten. Uh, Roman Reigns, Team with Cody. We had that whole situation. He didn't turn on Roman. They didn't turn on each other, so he, they had each other's backs. Uh, like Roman said uh, in the football stadium segment, uh, he, he he gave him his word or whatever. I thought uh, easily best match of the night goes to um, uh, CM Punk, Drew McIntyre. Those two killed it. They destroyed each other for like half an hour or however long the match was. There was blood everywhere, weapons everywhere. There's chaos and carnage everywhere. Got the return of Jimmy Uso. So again, the OG bloodline black together. Uh, they got Jimmy coming back. So should be getting Jey Uso back. Main event Jey Uso. Wise man Paul Heyman and Sami Zayn get the OG bloodline back together. Destroy this fake copycat wannabe bloodline. Get him. Gonna most likely happen at War Games Survivor Series. So yeah, I thought about the average show. Two two match show and the, really the Rock pretty much saved the show pretty much at the end for making this a terrible pay per view until like a about an average pay per view. I'm I'm thinking. All right, let's get to it. First up, Hell in a Cell match: Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk. Pretty much back and forth in the in the start, both exchange punches and kicks and stuff. And we got uh, Punk uh, used a wrench, or uh, Drew like had uh, there was like a toolbox. He just opened the toolbox up, and a bunch a bunch of stuff popped out, wrenches and stuff, chains. So Punk uh, used a wrench into Drew McIntyre's skull. Drew took, he like ripped the leg off of the table that if CM Punk had threw in earlier into the ring. He just ripped the leg off, started using that as a weapon. Uh, so he, yeah, he tried to use it. He missed the strike. Punk used a leg to choke Drew out. Almost poked his, almost poked his eyeball out. Uh, Drew hit a Claymore outside the ring. Drew drove CM Punk in the cell and then he just started bleeding the next the next time they put the camera on him, the blood looks so fake, man. Let's go back to old school blading and use real blood. Still looking brutal. All right. Um. Uh, Drew used this. Uh, he bashed CM Punk's uh, uh face with the steel steps. Then Punk started. Uh, wait, hold on. He bled after that. That was after he drove him into the cell. Okay, I can't remember. He it was either one of them. Either drove into the cell, he started bleeding. Yeah, I think that's when he started bleeding, and then or it was after the steps to the face. I can't remember. It was it was after one of them. Uh, Drew then used a wrench and uh, CM Punk's skull started jamming in in the skull. Drew set up a table outside the ring. Drew hit a belly to belly uh, suplex on CM Punk, and then Punk used the toolbox on Drew. Like bash him in the head with it a couple times. Punk hit three running knees. Then he hit the bulldog. Dropped Drew with the GTS. Drew rolled out the ring. Drew hit a claymore. Got a two count. CM Punk applied the sharpshooter. <laughs> this sharpshooter looked brutal, man. Bret, Bret Hart, if Bret Hart was there, he would have smacked CM Punk in the face. He butchered this thing so bad, man. And then Drew used... Uh, so Punk applied had the Drew in the sharpshooter. He, he saw uh, a wrench that was in the ring. So he just reached for the wrench and he just basically bashed it on. Uh, he hit CM Punk's back with it. Drew hit a suplex through the table right there in the picture. And then, uh, oh yeah, to do the suplex. So uh, CM Punk was like standing on this side of the turnbuckle and then uh, Drew was standing right here on the other side of the turnbuckle. So he basically lifted him up and hit a suplex. 
Ooh, his strength is crazy, man, Drew. Yeah, so he picked him over the apron and suplexed him through the table right there on the outside. Uh, Drew, uh, what did he do next? Uh, he pretty much tried to put, oh yeah, he tried to put the base ring, the the base steps, the heavier part of the steps. First, he tried to uh, throw it into the ring. He couldn't do it. And then I think he tried another way, and then he finally he just said, "Screw it! I'm just shove the steps in through the bottom rope." So that's what he did. But that was hilarious. Started he started selling a back injury when he couldn't do it the first two attempts. Punk hit G, uh, Drew with the GTS, got a two count. Drew hit white noise on the uh, on the base part of the steps in the ring. He got an ear fall. Punk applied the Anaconda Vice. Drew tried to counter again with the wrench, but this time CM Punk caught he caught the wrench. And now Drew's basically begging him, don't hit me, man. But then he low blow. Uh, Punk goes for the sh uh, the wrench attack. He, and he, Drew low blows Punk. Drew and then, uh, you know, those thumbtack bags, those little plastic uh, thumbtack bags that you usually see during like a Hell in a Cell hardcore match. So I thought it was thumbtacks, but he spilled it. He spilled it out with, the, with all the bracelet beads. From uh, CM Punk's bracelet, he must have got. He probably got a bunch of them and just broke them and put them in there. Drew missed the Claymore, and his back landed on the steps there in the ring. That looked nasty, man. He might have something like a broken back or a back sprain, something, man. That looked brutal. Uh, Punk wrapped the the chain around his own knee, and then he shoved the beads into Drew's mouth. And then he hit the GTS for the win. So CM Punk wins a Hell in a Cell match. And this feud is finally over. After, what, eight, nine months, this feud the whole year. And CM Punk can move on to somebody else. And so can Drew. So, yeah. That was a great opener. Best match of the night, easily. These two destroyed each other. All right. Next up, we had Nia Jax beat Bailey. I don't care for that. Who cares? Tiffany Stratton tried to cash in at the end. And uh, she uh, she failed because they uh, what was it? Bailey, I mean, not Bailey and uh, Nia Jax like sat up, uh, and then and that was it. She's like, "What are you doing?" You know, like I thought you were supposed to be my assistant or manager or whatever she is to her. So I didn't really care for that. Next up, Damian Priest versus Finn Balor. Pretty, pretty, I didn't care for this match either. Pretty much at the end, you had uh, Judgment Day, typical Judgment Day. They interfere. Same thing. Thought uh, Finn was going to win, but uh, Damien kicked out and then he hit the, uh, what was it? Uh, South of Heaven choke slam on Finn Balor for the win. So Damien gets his revenge finally on Finn Balor. So we'll see if this is over or it's going to continue. Hopefully Damien Priest can move on to something else. All right. Next up, Triple H announces that it's going to be at Crown Jewel. World champion versus WWE, or versus undisputed champion for both the uh, men and the women. So we're gonna have Gunther versus Cody and Liv versus Nia Jax. Right now are the matchups. I don't care, man. Gunther versus Cody. Hopefully Gunther wins. It's for this this what this one off title belt. It's like green and stuff and gold. Who cares, man? All right, then we get to the good stuff. Gunther, he shows up. After Triple H reveals the title, or after he announces the match, and you got Goldberg sitting in there, there in Atlanta, he says, "How can I be a? F how I think he said he said something like, "How can I be a fan of a one trick pony?" When I set off, when he said uh, he told Brett that uh, Goldberg was his favorite wrestler, he was just joking around. He says, "How can I be a fan of a one trick pony like you?" Something like that. And then his son and his wife was with him. In the front row behind the announcers. Says uh, to your son, Gage. He didn't know. He asked ah, Triple H. Oh, what's his name? Gage. His son's name. He says, I hope Bill is a better father than he was as a wrestler. <laughs> Goldberg tried to go over the, the barricade, the railing. He barely got over it, man. He barely got over that. So they got a, those, oh, you got a bunch of security guards popping out trying to stop Goldberg. They all stop him or whatever. Sami Zayn shows up. He tries... Beats up Gunther. So we're going to get a gold 57-year-old Goldberg's going to face Gunther at WrestleMania. Man, come on, man. Oh, my God. 
Yeah, I thought that was that was entertaining, man. Not gonna lie. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get Gunther versus Cody. I don't care, man. Crown Jewel. All right, next up we got the the uh, battle battle of custody for Dominic Part Two match <laughs> with him in a shark cage. Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley. Liv hit a power bomb into the barricade and Rhea on the outside. Rhea blocked, uh, Liv went for the three amigos, Rhea blocked the third one, and then somehow, they didn't explain this, Dom, uh, Dominic somehow opened the the cage door, he had no key, he didn't use any weapon, nothing, like how did he open the door, makes no sense, uh, Rhea hit a frog splash for a two count, and then Dom just like ended up hanging from the cage, yeah, like look at this, he just started... I think he tried to jump or he just slipped or something. So he just started hanging from the chain or from the cage by a chain. His foot was on a chain right there. And then uh, Rhea started hitting Dom with Kendall stick shots. Yeah, right there. And then you have, this is so random. Yo, why did Raquel Rodriguez show up and like turn heel on uh, Rhea Ripley? I don't know, man. I don't get this. And then, uh, yeah, so she helped. Uh, He's beat up uh, Rhea Ripley and uh, Rhea Ripley won by DQ. So Liv Morgan retains the title. I don't know, man. It's whatever. So it's going to be Raquel in the Judgment Day now or whatever. All right, let's get to uh, Roman and Cody versus Solo and Jacob. This match, dude, this match took forever to start, man. First, you had the, uh, it was the, the, what was it, the Georgia band, the Georgia Tech band. They started playing a song. And then they played Cody's song. And then they played Roman's song. It took forever. And then these guys had a stare down before, the, like, when the match started. They, like, wrestled for a bit. And then they had another 30-minute stare down. Like, oh, that's a waste of time, man. Too much, man. All right. Um, Jacob Fatu hit Cody with some moment drop. Cody was about to tag Roman. Uh, Jacob Fatu pulled him down from the apron. He pulled Roman down from the apron. And then uh, a few minutes later, Roman gets a tag. He hit a Superman punch on Solo. Got a two count. And then... Uh, uh, Jacob Fatu and Solo hit a moonsault uh, splash combo on Cody. Like one guy was it. Uh, Jacob was on one side of the uh, one turnbuckle. Solo was on the other. Uh, they hit it on uh, Roman. Cody broke up the pin. Cody hit a splash on uh, a diving splash on Jacob Fatu on the announce table. Before he did it, he pointed to Roman. I got this guy. You get you take care of Solo, pretty much. Roman and Solo exchange punches. Solo hit a spear on Roman for a two count, and then you see in the background. Okay, hold on. Let me get to it. Oh, hold on. This thing is in the way. You guys can't see it. There's a little taskbar in the way from Zoom. How do you hide this thing? Okay, hold on. Let me move this thing out the way. All right, there. Um. All right, where is it? Okay, so right there in the background. Stupid ads. All right, hold on. Just mute the ads. Okay. So, yeah, right there. Jimmy's, like, right there. He's hiding behind the Tonga Tonga brothers, whatever. So he super kicks both of them. And then uh, Roman hits the spear on Solo for the win. After the match, uh, Bloodline attack Cody. Jimmy and Roman are about to leave, and Jimmy's like, "Oos, we gotta go help him, Oos. You gave you gave me a word, Oos." <laughs> He's like, "Whatever you do, I do." Basically, said something like that. So right there, about to leave. Oh, what the? Why didn't show that? Yeah, right there. He's like, I got you, Oos. Whatever you wanna do, Oos. You gave me a word. We was gonna help him. So they go back to the ring. They pretty much clean house and beat up the bloodline. Fake wannabe bloodline. And then uh 
Uh, Roman picks up the title. Where is it? Okay, they don't. Okay, they don't have a still shot of it. Um, yeah, so he picked up the title slowly and handed it to Cody, and you hear it feels so well. What the rock is cooking? Music hits. Oh come on, you damn ads, man. All right, hold on, y'all. Oh my god, another one. Okay, so he taps his chest and then he does like the one, two, three, basically telling Cody last time we were in a match together, I pinned you. And that was pretty much it. And then he just left. So either this match is going to be most likely WrestleMania. It's not going to happen. It's the virus series. Doubt it. So yeah, basically warning him. And remember that night after WrestleMania, he gave Cody something. We, we couldn't see what it was, and then Cody put it in his pocket. So they're probably most likely they'll explain what that is, and Cody will put like bring it uh, when they're feuding. Let's wait and see what happens. So yeah, but give this show about a four out of ten, five out of ten, maybe six because the Rock showed up at the end, basically saved the show pretty much. It was mostly a boring pay per view. All right, Joe. Let's say my for my review for. Uh, For bad blood. See ya.